what are we going to talk about for our first episode? We're going to talk about one of your favorite stocks, or maybe not one of your favorite stocks, Palantir. So I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to kind of go this, go through this in different parts, uh, so we can kind of cover the company. It's a big company, and there's a lot to go over and cover it in several different segments. So without further ado, let's get started. So part one, we want to understand the value of Palantir. What is the most expensive asset? The data landscape and its purpose. What problems need to be solved in the world? And how does Palantir address any of these? And what do they actually do? Because a lot of companies, uh, or sorry, a lot of people don't understand what this company does. And that's why a lot of people aren't investing or they're maybe on the bearish case. And then we'll take a look at the leadership team. And if we have time for part one, we'll dive into some of their product platforms like Gotham, Foundry, and Apollo. But we may save that for part two, just because there's so much to cover in part one. And I want to make sure you guys understand how to do a deep dive on a stock. How do you look at a company? How do you evaluate it? And not just looking at valuations and market caps and stock prices. That's important, but you also have to understand the optionality of a company and where is it headed in the future? Are you looking at where the puck is now or are you skating to where it's going to be? And that's what excites me about Palantir is that this is a future company that is future thinking and has so much potential and analysts, uh, even retail investors don't really understand the potential of Palantir. So we're gonna start with an overview of what the company does, how was it founded? The way in which data systems have been built traditionally is for the convenience of the data system itself. They use these primitives like tables and columns and rolls, strings of text. This is not the way that anybody thinks about anything out in the world. What are the problems that you think about when you do your work? Cyber attacks and fraud, problems that are driven by emergent behavior, privacy and civil liberties, counterterrorism, counter narcotics, human trafficking. The thing about real world problems when it comes to a data perspective is that they're often described in multiple sources of data. The world has just been recording mountains and mountains of data and has no idea what to do with it. Unstructured text, structured data, images, cyber data logs, shipping manifests, customer lists, credit card records, data integration, which sounds decidedly unsexy, but I think is the seminal problem in the current age. What Palantir really tries to do is move to a model where even if the underlying databases are discrete, that I have an intervening layer of Palantir on top so that I, again, can focus on what it is that I do well, which is figure out what questions to ask. And the computers can do what they do well, which is to figure out how do I query the 56 databases in my organization and bring that data back into one coherent whole to me, the end user, so that I can ask questions and the computer can get the data. We're not creating a technology that's this black box algorithmic engine that you just throw data into it and it spits out an answer to you. We're actually allowing the people who understand these problems the best to do things with the data that they've always wanted to do but never had the technology to do. A really good example of this is foodborne illness, right? So people occasionally buy, say, ground beef that's tainted with E. coli and they get sick. And there's a group of scientists and researchers that monitor these things. They figure out where an outbreak starts, how it spreads, and how to shut it down. So if you try to put together a coherent data picture of what's going on here, you need shipping manifests from one or more different places, you need customer lists, credit card records, and you need information from the hospital. And what we do is we connect all the different data sources into this single coherent model. Now we have a Palantir data platform. The core piece of Palantir is really data integration. Um, it's the layer on which everything else is built. On top of that, you layer search and discovery, which allow you to understand and choose which particular pieces in all of the data sources you have integrated, you're gonna try to make sense of. Once you've made sense of that data, you have to have a way to store that, and that's called knowledge management. Knowledge management is critical because instead of thinking about data as simply the raw data itself, one should also think about the results of analysis as data unto itself that should be leveraged within the enterprise. If you have multiple analysts working on the problem, you have to have collaboration. 
And collaboration doesn't make sense without access control. Each person in your enterprise has a limited view because you have to respect the privacy of your users, of your customers, of citizens. This is a new model oftentimes for a lot of the people we work with, but we've seen time and time again that tremendous outcomes can happen and our customers solve their problems. In the healthcare context, our customers are using Palantir software to combat the rising cost of healthcare. In the law enforcement community, we're helping them solve crimes in real time. Palantir can actually help save homeowners from bankruptcy and foreclosure. The data relevant to properly value a home is in a disparate set of databases. As you are able to actually assess homes on a loan level basis, then you can think about what modifications can be made against that loan to have some type of alternative to foreclosure. Just knowing the missions that these organizations support, um, you, know, you, you feel really good about what Palantir is doing, what Palantir is bringing to the world. The purpose of Palantir is to bring the Palo Alto culture in the form of a platform to an enterprise to revolutionize the work being done in that enterprise on the back of this platform and to do it in a way that's fair and honest and corresponds to our values in the Valley, which are very high integrity, the best technology, open applications, ways of doing things that empower you to continue to do the work independent of us. What we're actually building not just addresses the problems you have today, but will scale into the problems you may have tomorrow. The next step is to think about what problems you want to solve, to think about what kinds of data that's out there to bring together. This is a partnership between us and our customers. The people are a big part of what we can offer in addition to kind of the power of the technology and the platform. It's amazing to go into an organization and just to watch their jaw drop as we show them our technology and they just say, you've just revolutionized the way that I do my job. We've all heard about how data is growing exponentially, and it is. It's growing so fast. A new powerful form of currency, I'm just going to read this off for us, of, is radically redefining the way people do business. A decade ago, Clive Humby said, the famous UK mathematician coined the phrase, data is the new oil. And it's so true. It's a currency now. His mention explains how data is valuable resource and very useful when refined. Data is the driver of growth and change. Now, institutions have the data that they need to make the best decisions for safety, stability, and prosperity, but too often their data is fragmented and located and locked in silos. The people on the front lines of our most important problems don't have the information they need and when they need it the most. And that's a quote straight from the Palantir website. So we just kind of peel that back and just think about that. Data is only as good as it is refined. Data is only as good as it is used. And it's only as good as it's accurate. So what we want from an artificial intelligence software program or from humans is accurate decisions, accurate data, and smart decision making in a timely manner. So how do we do that? Well, let's kind of dive that into that a little deeper with what problems need to be solved with data. So it's ubiquitous around all data being for different industries, private, nonprofit, enterprise. There's data everywhere. And by bringing the right data to the people who need it, our platforms empower our partners to develop life-saving drugs forecast supply chain disruptions, they locate missing children, and more. That's from the Palantir website. Those are game-changing contributions to our world. Life-saving drugs, forecast supply chain disruptions. Think about all the industries that deal with supply chain and locating missing children and making sure we're keeping our countries protected. Now, IDC recently calculated that 64 Point two zettabytes. Zettabytes. Have you heard of a zettabyte? <laughs> that is 64.2 billion terabytes. That is 64 billion hard drives that you have at your house of data was created and consumed and stored globally in 2020. 
And that market is growing 23% on annual compounded growth. So there's more data than ever has been created before. But if we don't use it and we don't know how to dissect it and make it applicable and useful, then it's just like all those photos that are on my wife's laptop that are just clogged up and there's just no room left. So what is Palantir doing for these industries? It's unlocking data for things such as ERP systems, customer relationship management systems like Salesforce, electronic health records, electronic medical records, marketing, IoT and other industries, they are unlocking the use of this data and making it better for companies to save money and make faster decisions. Now, like any valuable asset says here, data does best when it's leveraged effectively like we just talked about, but it's ensuring that the data works efficiently and sustainable for months, years, and business cycles to come. This is something we're gonna pour into as we go into the different products and see what makes Palantir different than all these other software programs that gives it this durability and the sustainability that we want out of an investment. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this content and learned something new about investing. Now, if you did like it, make sure to smash that like button, help us deliver new content for you and hit subscribe. So this way you don't miss any other episodes of our YouTube channel. You can also listen to our network podcast, Pounding the Table, so you can learn more about stocks and learning how to beat the market. Now, are you ready to jump back in the water and dive in? I know I am. So until next time.